Hello sports fans, welcome to Super Sports Central. Today we have my week 12 college football predictions. So last week I had a record of 13-8, which brings my overall record on the season to 158-46. Starting off on Saturday's games, we have UCF hosting Navy. So this game actually starts at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, which is also local time for this game. So it's an early start for both teams. Uh, UCF is coming off a big win over Tulane, and they need to avoid a letdown against Navy. But UCF has beat good opponents before uh, and earlier this season and avoided a letdown like when they d defeated Cincinnati. They did not have a letdown after that. And now against Tulane, after their win over Tulane, which is a pretty convincing win, by the way, uh, I think they're going to avoid another letdown because they were able to vo avoid a letdown the first time. So obviously we have reason to believe they're going to avoid a second letdown. So uh, I have UCF winning this one easily at home, winning big on Navy, winning by a score of 37-10. And just so you guys know, if UCF does win this game, they will be able to clinch a spot in the AAC Championship game as long as Houston loses to East Carolina. Up next, we have Michigan hosting Illinois. So this is going to be a very interesting game. Both teams have elite run games and elite defenses. Michigan has the best scoring defense in the country, and Illinois has the third best scoring defense in the country. Uh, both teams are very reliant on their ground game. Michigan is top five in yards per game on the ground, and Illinois is not as good, but they still average 183 uh, rushing yards a game, and it's going to be a test for both passing attacks because whoever has whoever's passing attack is better in this game is going to end up getting the win, and I think Michigan's got the better passing attack, and they're uh, be able to get the win over Illinois. And now the Illinois defense hasn't been great recently, and so now if this game was a few weeks ago when Illinois was riding a winning streak, and they had lost their past two games, and their defense was still playing really well, their run game was really well, was really good, uh, I would definitely consider picking Illinois and think it would be a really close game, but instead, I'm going to go with Michigan getting the win here, as they will defeat Illinois, winning by a score of 31-10. to 10. Up next, we have TCU visiting Baylor. So TCU had a good win last week over Texas, and Baylor got destroyed by Kansas State. The TCU defense was very good against Texas, showing their defense can be good too, not just their offense. Now, the Baylor offense was non-existent last week, scoring only three points in their blowout loss to Kansas State. And now, the Baylor defense wasn't good. I, I think the Baylor team as a whole can get back on track and get the upset win over TCU here. I think Baylor is going to have a bounce-back game, but I don't think it's going to be enough to beat TCU, as TCU will get the win here at 34-28. Up next, we have Alabama hosting Austin P. So, Austin P is an FCS team, and they're a good FCS team, but I mean... It's an FCS team against Alabama. Alabama is one of the best teams in the country. And they should get a easy win over Austin P, making it two in a row after their loss to LSU. After they had a good bounce back win last week over Ole Miss, they're getting another good bounce back win over over uh, Austin P. And Alabama wins this game easily by a score of 52-7. Up next, we have Louisiana visiting Florida State. So Florida State's been a bit up and down this season. They started off 4-0, then they lost three straight, and now they've won three straight. So Florida State is in the midst of their best season since 2016, and Louisiana is pretty good defensively, and overall they're decent as a team. But Florida State is just going to be too good, and they're going to cruise to victory as they'll be able to get the win pretty easily, winning by a score of 38-13. Moving on, we have West Virginia hosting Kansas State. So Kansas State has been good at times this season and not so good at times this season. They're coming off a really good win over Baylor, um, but they did lose quarterback Adrian Martinez for multiple weeks due to a leg injury. But backup quarterback Will Howard has been good this season when Kansas State has needed him. And for West Virginia, they haven't exactly been good this season. They're only 4-8, and, and they've struggled mightily defensively. So even without Adrian Martinez for Kansas State, uh, Kansas State should have no problem easily beating West Virginia, winning by a score of 34-14. Moving on, we have Arizona State hosting uh, Oregon State. So Oregon State's been good this season, even without their starting quarterback chance no one since October 1st. But backup... Uh, ben Gulberson has been pretty good for Oregon State, and it seems like he's going to get the start again this week, as Chance Nolan has not yet been cleared to practice. And Arizona State really isn't that good, and they usually play some pretty close games, so I think this will be another close-er game, but Oregon State will still easily get the win. Uh, 35-23. Moving on, we have Notre Dame hosting Boston College. So Notre Dame got off to a slow start this season, but they've been much better recently. Boston College isn't that good this season, but they are coming off a big upset win over NC State. Boston College has been without starting quarterback Phil Jakovic the past two weeks, who is actually a former Notre Dame quarterback before he transferred to BC. 
And now the Boston College offensive line is brutal, and the Notre Dame defensive line is pretty good. Notre Dame should be able to dominate this game both offensively and defensively, and they will easily beat Boston College, winning by a score of 34 to 10. Up next, we have Georgia visiting Kentucky. So Kentucky's coming off coming off a loss to Vanderbilt. The offensive line has been brutal this season for Kentucky, and that is a big reason why they haven't been good. Now they face Georgia, who is one of the best defensive fronts in the country, and Georgia is also the number one team in the country for a reason. I think. The Georgia defense should dominate this game, and obviously we know the offense is good. They're going to put up points. Georgia will win this game easily, winning by a score of 34-0. And now, I could see Kentucky with the upset, but after their loss to Vanderbilt, not anymore. Moving on, we have Maryland hosting Ohio State. So, Ohio State's been great this season, especially offensively, led by Heisman contending quarterback C.J. Stroud. They've also ran the ball pretty effectively, but they're dealing with injuries to their top two running backs in Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams. So, if they're without those top two backs, I'm interested to see, are they still going to be able to run the ball effectively? Maryland usually has a pretty good offense, but the past few weeks, they've been essentially non-existent on offense, scoring 10 points against Wisconsin, and then getting shut out against Penn State. So, Ohio State should easily get the win here, defeating Maryland, winning by a score of 52-13. Moving on, we have Miami visiting Clemson. So, the college football playoff isn't uh, out of the picture for Clemson, especially if they beat every opponent remaining on their schedule, including North Carolina in the ACC championship game convincingly. Uh, now, Clemson is coming off a pretty good win over Louisville in their bounce-back win after their loss to Notre Dame a few weeks ago. And now, Miami hasn't been that good, uh, especially offensively, only scoring 25 points a game. Miami uh, is also without starting quarterback Tyler Van Dyke, who's dealing with a shoulder injury, so Clemson should easily get the win here because Miami is already bad offensively. Now they're playing with the back of quarterback. Clemson dominates this game, winning 45-10. to up next, we have Penn State visiting Rutgers. So, Penn State has been eliminated from Big Ten title contention after losing to both Ohio State and Michigan. They could still finish 11-2 after a bowl game, which would be their best season since 2019. Now, Penn State's offense has been much better this season, thanks to a great rushing attack. And Rutgers is on a three-game losing streak, and they're just really not that great. Uh, Penn State has won 15 straight against Rutgers, and they make it 16 this week, as they dominate this game, winning 38-6. Up next, we have Louisville hosting NC State. So, NC State's coming off a bad upset loss to Boston College, but they lost 21-20. to Louisville's coming off a loss to Clemson, but quarterback Malik, uh, Malik Cunningham did not play in that game due to a shoulder injury. And he's currently day-to-day -day heading into this game against NC State. So, for me, this game depends on the status of Malik Cunningham. Does he play? Does he not play? Because he's the type of game, cha uh, game changer. He'll make big plays with his legs, uh, back-breaking plays on a defense. So if Cunningham plays, I'll take Louisville winning 28-23. 20, uh, if he does not play, I'll take NC State 27-17. Up next, we have Cincinnati visiting Temple. So Cincinnati isn't in the college football playoff picture like last year. Um, they're 8-2, still having a good season, and they have an opportunity to play for the American Athletic Conference Championship. Um, and now they could definitely still make the New Year's, a New Year's Six Bowl game, specifically the Cotton Bowl. Um, now they face Temple, who has been awful this season, and this game shouldn't be that competitive. Cincinnati wins 42-10. Up next, we have North Carolina hosting Georgia Tech. So North Carolina has already clinched a spot in the ACC Championship game against Clemson. Now they face Georgia Tech, who has lost three of their last four. And Georgia Tech is a terrible defense. Now they face Drake May, who's having a outstanding season. He's really has a Heisman Dark Horse for, uh, for North Carolina, leading their elite offense. North Carolina should should blow out Georgia Tech, score a lot of points, winning by a score of 49-6. Moving on, we have Tennessee visiting South Carolina. So Tennessee still has a chance to make the college football playoff, actually a pretty good chance to make the playoff, and they can make their chances even better if they destroy their remaining opponents like they did to Missouri last week, winning 66-24. South Carolina is going to need to score a lot to keep up with Tennessee's explosive offense, and South Carolina offense has struggled mightily this season, so Tennessee will easily win this game, winning 56-14. Up next, we have Arkansas hosting Ole Miss. So this is an, uh, this is another game I would keep an eye on. So last week, we saw LSU almost fall to Arkansas. And this is another game I would definitely watch because Ole Miss is coming off a loss to Alabama. And they're now going to Arkansas, who's a decent team, especially if they get quarterback KJ Jefferson back from injury. They're actually a pretty good team. And now Ole Miss is a run-first team. And Arkansas has an okay run defense. I could see the upset here, but I'll take Ole Miss getting the win here 34-26. 
Up next, we have Oklahoma State visiting Oklahoma. So this game is usually a, a played a week later in the final week of the regular season during rivalry week. So it is a rivalry game, Oklahoma State against Oklahoma. So Oklahoma State's been up and down the season, especially recently. And Oklahoma has had a bad first season in the Brent Venables era. They're only 5-5, five and five, and they need to win one of their next two to just become bowl eligible. Oklahoma State might be without starting quarterback Spencer Sanders. He didn't start last week's game, um, but he did come off the bench to throw a game-winning touchdown pass. So now, we don't know if Spencer Sanders is going to play, and that's what my prediction is going to uh, depend on. If Spencer Sanders plays and he starts, I will take Oklahoma State. If not, then I'll take Oklahoma. I could see this game going either way, and especially anything can go because it's a rivalry game. Up next, we have the Battle of the LA Schools, and that is USC visiting uh, UCLA. This is another rivalry game with playoff implications, and it could have even more playoff implications if UCLA didn't lose to Arizona last week. So USC is a one-loss team and could create a very interesting argument to get themselves into the playoff if they're a one-loss Pac-12 champion, but obviously they'd need to win this game in order to even have that argument exist. So this is a game that I think is going to be a shootout. Both teams got elite offenses, not great defenses. Although I do think UCLA's got the slightly better defense. So I could see this game going either way. I think UCLA's the more complete offense with the better ground game. Uh, with a great one-two punch of quarterback Dorian Thompson-Robinson and running back Zach Charbonnet. For USC, they just suffered a big loss to their running back room as their top running back Travis Dodge went down for the season with an injury last week in the win over Colorado. So I think UCLA, uh, yeah, UCLA's going to get the win here because they have the better defense and the more complete offense. And I think that's going to lead them to their win over the Crosstown rival in USC, winning by a score 41-38. Up next, we have LSU hosting UAB. So LSU's already clinched the SEC West, but they can't lose if they want to keep their swim playoff hopes alive. And UAB isn't that good. I think LSU should easily win this game, defeating UAB by a score of 38-6. Up next, we have Washington hosting Colorado. So Washington is coming off a huge upset win over Oregon. And another point, they went from playing one of the best teams in the Pac-12, and now they face Colorado, who's one of the worst teams in the country, and also the worst team in the Pac-12. So there could be a letdown here for Washington. If it is a letdown, it's just going to be a closer game. Um, it's not going to be a loss to a really bad Colorado team. And now, I don't think Colorado could get the win here. Washington wins easily winning uh, by a score of 49-3. And our final game... It is a Pac-12 game. It is a good one. It is a big one. It should be fun. It is Oregon hosting Utah. This game is unfortunately played late at night at 10.30 Eastern Time. But uh, this is going to be a really good game. It no longer has playoff implications because Oregon lost to Washington last week. But the Oregon offense has been really good under quarterback Bo Nix this season. But they face a pretty good Utah defense. And this will be a tough matchup um, for, for both the Oregon offense and the Utah defense. The Utah offense is good, but the... Uh, Oregon defense is also pretty good. I can see this game going either way. It should be a very fun, high, uh, highly entertaining game. Uh, I'll take Oregon getting the win here, 42, uh, for, sorry, 45-42. But it's truly a coin flip for me. I could see this game going either way. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, that's all for my Week 12 college football predictions. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I do my best to post as often as possible. Make sure to check out the community tab of my channel where you guys can vote on who you think will win some of this, some of this week's big games. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of their upcoming videos, and I will see you in the next video.